Hi and welcome to this special edition of MRTV Live. In this live stream, we're going to talk about this here. Pimax has just announced their new flagship device, the Pimax 12K QLED. And I'm telling you, Pimax went completely wild with this announcement. And well, in this video, in this live stream, I'm going to try to summarize everything everything that you want to know about this headset. It is, it's a super high resolution headset that can not only do PC VR, they can also use this in standalone mode, which is pretty insane and so many crazy things <laughs> that I can simply um, yeah, I have to talk about that. I have to talk about in this live stream, even it is 1 a.m. here at night. And I'm telling you, this is going to be a very exciting live stream. So absolutely stay tuned, watch the whole video because all of this goodness is coming up. Yeah, welcome back here to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang and this channel here is all about VR and AR. So if you have not yet subscribed to MRTV, then absolutely do this now and click on the bell button so that you don't miss anything and so that you will always be up to date about all the excitement things that are going on in virtual reality. And I'm telling you, this month is friggin' crazy. We had the leaks of the Quest Pro, right? We had the Vario Aero, Aero announcement. Now we had that insane announcement from Pimax talking about the Pimax Q, no, the Pimax 12K QLED, their reality series of flagship headsets. And wow, we as VR fans couldn't be any happier. So you know what? Let us simply try to summarize everything that we learned about the new flagship device that Pimax wants to launch in Q4 of 2022. So next year before the holiday season, they want to launch it. And well, after I try to summarize everything about this headset, of course, we're also going to talk about what we think, can they actually make this happen? And of course, I would hope that they can make this happen because that headset, it simply sounds too good to be true. But let's get into this. Let's get into this. So let's start with the lenses. And in the announcement, they said, you know, there are Fresnel lenses and there are aspheric lenses and both have their pros and cons. You know what we did? We have made a complete new lens system that has the best of both worlds. And they call it the bionic lenses. Let's have a look at that. So this is what it looks like. And it seems like, and I can just guess here from what I can see from this picture, that in the outer areas of your peripheral vision, it does look like Fresnel, you have those concentric rings that are typical for Fresnel. And it seems like in, in the center of your vision, this part looks kind of clear. So it seems like this might be here, might be as ferric as in clear. And in the, in the peripheral area, it seems to be Fresnel. And Pimax says that, well, this is basically the best of both worlds. And what they achieve with those new lenses is another, Another um, great FOV, and as you know, the Pimax headsets are known for their huge FOV, and here they even get a bigger FOV than they had ever before. So Pimax says that now with these new bionic lenses, they are going to achieve an FOV, a horizontal FOV, so we're not talking about diagonal here, of 200 degrees. And that would be very close to the human vision, to the human vision FOV of 220. So VR1 had 100, they say. VR2, like their own Pimax headsets, had 170 degrees. And now the Pimax Reality Series, it is supposed to have 200 degrees horizontal vision. They also talked about the vertical field of view. Oh no, this is not the vertical. Um, the vertical field of view is... Also, let me just 
check this out. It's also very high and it's 135 degrees. So basically they say with this new headset, they have actually reached the human vertical FOV. But not only that, with this headset, Pimax says that they are also like tackling the big problem that the Pimax headsets had before, and that is the binocular overlap. The overlap that allows you to have like a great 3D vision and also like a comfortable um, viewing experience. That was not great with the Pimax headsets, and the company says they understood that and they have achieved, they have um, solved this problem with the new headsets and now with the new Pimax reality um, system, they would reach 118 degrees of binocular overlap and that is like super close to the human one, which is 120 degrees. And that of course would be amazing if they really can achieve that huge binocular overlap. All right, so that's about the lenses. Like the combination of, of um, Fresnel and a spheric and super huge, um, super huge FOV. And they also say that with these lenses and with this whole system, they have completely killed any kind of distortion, which of course would be unbelievably amazing, right? Because for the Pimax headset, unfortunately, in the peripheral area, you still had this kind of distortion that threw off many people. And Pimax says that with this headset now, there is absolutely no distortion anymore. And well, if they achieve what they promise, obviously, that would be amazing. Anyways, let's now talk about Oh no, we're not even finished. We're not even finished. So this has eye tracking, of course, and also automatic IPD adjustment, something that we see now with the Vario Aero. So what, it, what does it mean? Like when you put this on, then the device would um, measure your IPD and automatically adjust those lenses to fit your, your eyes. And that is absolutely fantastic. I love the automatic IPD adjustment with the Vario Aero and the Vario VR3. So to have this here, it would be amazing. And they have a very big um, IPD range as well, 57 to 72 millimeter. And that's all based on the eye tracking. So for the optical system, sounds so good. Sounds really, really good. So, then, now let's talk about the resolution of the panels. <laughs> wow, <laughs> so that is crazy. The Pimax 8KX that is out right now, it has around 50 million subpixels. But now with that reality series, they say that they have now increased the resolution of the subpixels to 120 million subpixels. Wow, that is absolutely crazy. And they also say that now with this new um, with this new display over that huge FOV, they get um, a pixel per degree, a pixel per degree of 35. And that is that would be really really good. Like the Vario Aero that that I've shown you here on the channel last week, it does have that PPD, that pixel per degree of 35. And I can tell you, 35 pixel per degree looks absolutely stunning. It looks beautiful. It's it's just fantastic. So this is the resolution that they're going here for in that um, 12K QLED. Yeah, so huge, huge resolution. And the question, of course, what could drive that kind of resolution, right? And we'll, we'll look into this also. So then they have all, again, they combined some technologies here. So like with the lenses, they combined um, aspheric lenses and those um, Fresnel lenses for, for the display technology they are combining QLED, and that's what, that's what the name is, together with mini LED. And that sounds pretty amazing because with these two technologies, well, you would get like beautiful colors, like 
better colors than with OLED and you would still get OLED blacks. So this, is a, this seems to be a really fantastic technology and mini LED is something fantastic since, well, here, here they say it, QLED. So the, you have like a very nice um, yeah, color range. Like here they say that you have 90% um, coverage of BT2020 and OLED has only 70 percent coverage of BD2020 and you have this mini LED backlights, right? So these dimmable zones, just like you have with the um, with with the um, uh, Apple MacBook Pro display with a new one. So that would be friggin' amazing, of course, as well. Yeah, so huge, huge, incre <laughs> incredibly huge um, resolution, great Display technology, huge field of view, <laughs> amazing lenses, they say, right? We don't know that yet. We have to try it ourselves. But from this announcement, this seems to be like, um, yeah, a headset where every everything that a VR enthusiast could basically want, it is put into this device, right? But it's not even finished. It is not even finished. I'm telling you, it's not even finished. So this announcement was absolutely Pimax going wild, going completely wild. So what else could there be? What else could they put into this? You might ask yourself. Well, how about a refresh rate of not 90 hertz, but 200 hertz? Yes, 200 hertz, right? So, wow, this is going to be exciting to see what kind of GPU can drive um, 120 million subpixels at 200 hertz. Wow, now this is going to be interesting. But anyways, 200 hertz display with this kind of display technology with perfect blacks, huge human eye FOV, and uh, wow, this is... this announcement is really, really Pimax going completely wild. But that is still not everything. I'm telling you, this is still not everything. This was such a great, crazy, wild announcement. So what else? Okay, eye tracking we know already. Okay, so since we know already now that Pimax with this headset totally likes to combine everything together, right? Because no compromises, right? Aspheric lenses, Fresnel lenses, no, bionic lenses. Then um, display technology, okay, QLED and mini LED, LED combined. Now, is it a PC VR headset or is it a standalone headset? <laughs> well, why not both? <laughs> so Pimax calls this, I think, Omni all-in-one. So this is not only a, stand uh, a PC VR headset as we know it from the Pimax headsets. At the same time, it is also a standalone headset with the XR2 chipset. I'm not kidding you. So let's have a look at this. So in native PC VR mode, you get the 12K resolution and in standalone mode, you get 8K or 5K resolution. Then for the refresh rate in native PC VR mode, you get 200 hertz maximum and in standalone VR mode, you still get up to 120 hertz. And for the FOV, for the native mode, you can choose, right? And um, no, no, this is the horizontal one, the 200 um, degrees that you talked about. And in standalone mode, you still get 150 degree horizontal, which still like would kill any other standalone headset on the market. And this comes with swappable, with swappable um, batteries. You can simply swap in another battery, and they they showed this in their renders, and it looked absolutely fantastic. Also, they have not only eye tracking. I totally forgot to mention this. I'm so sorry. I forgot to mention this. They not only have eye tracking, they also have mouth tracking and face tracking. So all the technologies that any VR enthusiast could ever hope and wish for, Pimax have put it into this device, 
which is pretty, pretty crazy here. So, and um, yeah, why don't we just have another look at it? Why don't we just have another look at it? Because, well, this, it looks pretty interesting. So again, let's have another look at how this looks like here. So the design, yeah, pretty um, interesting. Well, it does remind us very much of the headsets that we know from Pimax, but it's still a new design, right? It's still a new design, but this time in standalone modes. And well, they have uh, remastered speakers, they say, and they have six degrees of freedom inside out tracking. Yeah, I totally forgot to mention this. This is not a lighthouse headset. This is an inside out headset. And well, the controllers, if these are the controllers, they do look very much, if not exactly like the Oculus Touch controllers from the Quest 1, right? Well, then they also have microphones and, wow, swappable covers. <laughs> so many things. Here, here, the swappable cushion, which is good, and the replaceable rear battery, which has 6,000 6, milliampere per hours. It's well balanced, as they say. And you, you can have a native PC VR mode via cable, right, just like now. And the bionic lenses that we talked about with this huge FOV and automatic IPD adjustment. Right. And you have two cameras built in for eye tracking. And the huge FOV. And this 35 PPD screens with their new panels, QLED and mini LED. Active and passive, passive cooling and the XR2 chipset for the standalone mode. And, well, there's also a YGIG module. <laughs> so really, wow, well, it's crazy. So, oh yeah, oh, we, did, we haven't even talked about the Pimax VR station. We are going to talk about the Pimax VR station in a moment. And you have face tracking. And, what else? Lip tracking, exactly. Lip tracking as well. Wow, everything, everything that the VR enthusiasts could dream about in one headset. Body tracking also. I, I even didn't know. <laughs> now I know. And you can also attach different kind of modules. Lighthouse module if you want. Then you can also use it as a lighthouse headset. Or there's also a mixed reality cover for mixed reality pass-through. A cellular 5G cover. I, I can't even put everything into one stream. It's crazy. It is absolutely insane. An absolutely insane announcement. Wow, this is really, really crazy. Yeah, the device is going to cost $2,399 and it's going to be available in Q4 2022. And, well, for all those who will have um, a, a, a Pimax headset before that, I think 12 months before that, they can totally like trade in their Pimax headset and they will get the full price of the, their current Pimax headset um, traded in so that, well, so that, um, yeah, the, the, this $2,399 will go down in price depending on what kind of headset they are going to trade in. Absolutely insanity what an announcement really what an announcement and uh, even I, I i didn't expect this i really didn't expect this i did hear rumors of that um that pimax is going to um launch a standalone headset but honestly speaking i did not believe those rumors so this announcement really surprised me i must say and yeah that is crazy that is crazy and also these modules these modules 
this is this reminds me of the cosmos of course right this reminds me of the cosmos where they also had exchangeable face plates and here are the modules made by pimax a y gig 60 gigahertz module so that you can play pc vr wirelessly a lighthouse cover so that you can still use lighthouse if you want swappable battery we've seen that hand tracking face tracking body tracking modules MR cover, cellu cellu cellular 5G cover. Oh my God, I even cannot speak anymore. <laughs> That's crazy. And the deluxe speakers. Yes, and Perplexer says, oops, hello Perplexer. This will make for a nice 2010 24 Christmas. Yes. So we haven't even talked about this here, the VR station. What is the VR station? Because, well, you might be wondering what can drive this? What, what, what is going to drive this device? Uh, what about the people who want to play PC VR games? Well, Pimax has also thought about this and they say they're going to offer this here, the Pimax VR station, which is a mini PC just made for Pimax headsets. So a portable powerhouse with high-end graphics cards, which will be able to power this system, plug and play experience, everything built in that you need, also the YGIG module, so you can wirelessly play with that, with that um, Pimax 2K QLED, the, this, the VR games. And they made it sound as if this was just as a console, you know, like plug and play. You will just, um, you will just, here it is. <laughs> you will just purchase this. Everything is perfectly configured. And even people who don't know much about PCs should be able to play their P the PC VR games with this. And I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. I needed to go live now, even it's 1 a.m. in Germany, to talk about this. So really, basically everything, everything that a VR enthusiast could wish and hope for put into one device that is going to cost 2400 and is going is supposed to come out in Q4 in 2022. Okay, okay, so now what do I think about it? What do I think about the Pimax 2K QLED reality series headset? First of all, what did I think about the announcement and the presentation? Yeah, I think they did a good job with that, really. So it, everything looked very good, and I think they really made a very nice announcement here. And I, I watched it before I made my German uh, my German um, podcast, and yeah, it was really, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the presentation. <laughs> I really liked it. But anyways, I don't want to talk about the presentation here. I want to talk about what I think of the Pimax 12K QLED headset. So in my opinion, if this really becomes a reality, if this really becomes a headset, that is available, that we can buy, and it will, it will really arrive at our doorsteps and delivers everything that they have promised us in this stream, in this announcement, then, of course I want it. Yeah, shut up and take my money. Of course, I'll throw it at them. No question about it. It seems like it really has everything that we want, like huge FOV without any distortion, like nearly human FOV without any distortion, um, new lens without any kind of God rays and just everything the best, and then a perfect blacks with that mini LED and that perfect resolution that is just as good as the Vario Aero in terms of PPD, right? Then even standalone if you want. and. And a PC VR, if you want, like the best of both worlds, no compromises, everything into everything cramped into one headset. So like unbelievable, really. Like like this sounds like the dream. This sounds like the friggin' dream of every single VR enthusiast. Period. Right? I think we can totally agree on this. And I'm telling you. I'm rooting for, I'm totally rooting for Pimax. I am absolutely 
rooting for Pimax to make this a reality and to have this under our Christmas tree in 2022. If they achieve it, yes, great, perfect. We will all be happy. All the VR enthusiasts in this world will be super happy because they would have delivered exactly what we want. Period. But, <laughs> unfortunately, this is the big if. If. If they would have done it. If there wasn't the word if. You know, this is like my big concern. This is my big concern. And I'm telling you, the Pimax 8KX, it sounded just as good when they talked about it like years ago, like years and years ago in the Pimax Kickstarter. When was it? 2016 or 17? Like years and years ago. It sounded just like this sounds now at that time. When you think back in the Kickstarter times when they talked about the Pimax 8KX, at that time when they first came out with this, we couldn't believe it. Like what? 200 degrees FOV? 8K resolution? Are you kidding me? What should drive this? We were exactly like we felt about this now, right? Just think back 2016 or 2017 when they talked about the Pimax 8KX for the first time. We were just thinking just like now, like wow, perfect. This is going to revolutionize VR. And now in 2021, we just now, we just got it, the Pimax 8KX. It has just arrived right now with the audio solution, right? So, so many years have passed and well, they have had like a history, unfortunately, of delaying over and over and over again. Like for example, for the audio solution, right? For that um, deluxe audio strap solution, which will give players like a uh, similar audio like the Valve Index. And well, this is only one audio solution, like, like audio, like a head, like a headphones. And this here, with all that complexity, with all these crazy things that they've talked about, right? Like everything must come together to make this happen. Like new lenses, new displays, new everything. Like so many moving parts, so many moving parts must be coming together to make this happen, which is basically um, completely crazy. You know, there's so many things, so many things, like all the different covers, like Lighthouse cover, um, I don't even know, the, the MR cover, like body tracking, you know, all these different things coming together so that Pimax would really deliver this in Q4 2022. Like, I'm telling you, I honestly don't think Pimax can make it happen. And don't get me wrong, I'm rooting for them. I really hope they can make it happen. I want them to, to bring this, I want them to get to the market, and I want them to surprise us in the very best of ways. I really want it. I want them to like prove us all wrong. I want to see myself here in Q4 2022, unboxing the thing, and telling you, wow, I am blown away. I can, I will never use any other headset but the 12K QLED. I want to tell you that. Next year, I want, I, I really want. I, again, I'm rooting for them. Just like from the experience that we made with Pimax over and over again, I simply can't believe this is happening. I simply can't believe this is happening and um, like, it, it just feels like we never arrive. We never arrive to something. You know, like for now for the Pimax 8KX, it seems to be ready, nearly ready, or it is ready basically. The, the full headset, right? The full headset with the, the audio solution with anything, right? But now the next carrot is again dangling in front of our, of our um, head. The next carrot that we have to like follow 
in order to forget, forget all the things they were in the past. So as much as I hope this would be, this everything will be true and this will be the main headset, I'm just now a bit cautious about this new headset. And yeah, that's that's just what I can say. Also, of course, what can um, what what actually could could drive this? I I don't know yet, right? It's even now tough to drive the 8KX. It works, right? But this has even double, more than double the amount of subpixels that need to be driven. Probably some compression that can be used. I don't know all the details. I just saw the announcement just like you, right? So that is like one question. No, lots of questions. Can they deliver this in time? Probably not. I hope, I hope, like all enthusiasts hope, but probably not. What can drive this? Can can this enthusiast can this uh, Pimax station probably drive this? If yes, will it be available in time? And how expensive is that Pimax station? Then about the standalone mode, how is this going to work out? Um, will they have their own store for that standalone uh, mode? Is it the Pimax store web store for games? What kind of games will be played in this? Is it like um, like quest games? That can quest games be easily ported over to this? Is this like an OpenXR um, mobile store? And if yes, is it going to be full of games that we already um, know and love? So so many questions, and. I don't know. So this was an amazing announcement. <laughs> I love the show and I really, really enjoyed it. But with all the experience that we have with Pimax, I'm personally taking this with a huge grain of salt. But again, I wish, I hope they prove me wrong. I really, really hope they prove me wrong. And now... I still want to use a few moments before I go to bed and go home and eat something because it's like <laughs> 1.30 a.m. here. I want to know what you guys and girls think about it. Do you think that Pimax is going to deliver that device in time for Q2 2022? <laughs> I want to say 4,022. <laughs> no, no. So, do you believe that Pimax is going to deliver this in Q4 2022? Please say yes. Please say yes if you believe that Pimax is going to deliver this in time in Q2, in Q4 2022. Say yes. If you think no, then say no. Hell no. Tyler, no. See you in three years. No, 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 no. Push the button, perplexer. 2077. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Carrie Grown, hi Carrie, how are you doing? No, 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 no. Lol, says Jeff McLeod. Yes, Guillermo Rodriguez says yes. Brian Brogan says yes. Oliver Cook says yes, 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 yes. <laughs> wow. Phil, hi Phil. No. So, overwhelming, the overwhelming amount of people does not. Think they're going to keep that promise. I need GDX 4090. I believe we all will need that device. We all would need that. But let me... Yeah, so that is, of course, very interesting. So most of you don't think that they will be able to deliver this in time. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. So, um, then the next question, the next question that I want to ask you, and I'm, I'm just checking here on my channel. Actually, I think I could just do 
I could just do a poll. Let me do a poll right now. Let me do a poll. And the poll is going to be, are you going to um, order the Pimax 12K QLED? And yes, no, perhaps. Oh, let me let me write more. Yes, directly. Yes, after good reviews. Yes, directly. Going to pre-order. Yes, after it launched and had good reviews. Uh, after launched, <laughs> good reviews, no. Okay, what more options should I put? <laughs> okay, no. So let's, let's, let's put out that poll. So I've just put out the poll and would love to know if you are going to, yeah, if you are going to order this or if you're going to pre-order this or something. Yeah, super interesting, super exciting, super exciting. Yeah, and well, of course, I think uh, with this announcement, Pimax also wants to um, get some, um, um, how to say that in English again? Uh, I forgot it now. Like spoil the party of the Vario Aero and probably some people that wanted to buy the Vario Aero, like uh, sway them away and make them wait for the Pimax 12, uh, 12K QLED, right? Makes sense. Just like, well, well, well the Vario Aero, it will come out in December. And for this device, Pimax says it's going to come out in Q4 2022, so one year later. So that will be really, really interesting to find out. Anyways, really, really exciting, exciting um, announcement. Oh, cool. We have Pimax USA in the house. Hi, long time no see, Kevin. So I will absolutely want to try it, of course. So um, so Kevin says that um, that um, people can try it at CES 2000 uh, next year. So yeah, I will, I will ob obviously, I will go to CES and I am absolutely going to try it. That's fantastic that we can already try it then. So... So um yeah Kevin I'm you know I love to try new headsets right so I will absolutely come so then it is now already set in stone at CES I'm going to try yeah the Pimax 12K QLED so I'm I'm really looking forward to it I'm absolutely looking forward to it and also looking forward to to meet Skiva and who's also in the chat and absolutely going to yeah i'm i'm so i'm excited of course to try out the pimax 12k qled at ces 2022 then wow i didn't expect it that's cool that is really really cool so obviously here on mrtv i'm going to show you that hopefully live then uh, when i do it um, when I go to um, CES 2022, which is which is really soon, by the way, or what? We already have like like November soon. Oh my goodness, this is crazy! This is crazy. This is really really crazy. So, so Kevin, can um, can I already see uh, the, like uh, in standalone mode, or how will you be able to show it off? Like now that I have you here, then um, yeah, you can tell me. And well, 
that would be great. And well, if you if you want, if you if you want, then you can actually, and that is really really spontaneous. If you want, Kevin, you could come onto this show right now, live. Let me send you. Let me let me go to my email. And let me send you the link to allow you to join the show if you if you have time, <laughs> and if you can make it happen, of course that would be freaking amazing. So let me send you an email right now. <laughs> so that you can, if you want, Join the stream live now. <laughs> that would be so crazy. So I've just sent out I've just sent out the link. So if you if you have the time and if you would like to come onto the show, then absolutely you could come now. I have sent you the link to join it. Because obviously this is like such a crazy announcement, and for sure we would have like uh yeah lots of questions to to ask or like talk about it just talk about it that would be <laughs> that would be so cool join 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 <laughs> okay okay cool 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 wait a moment wait a moment this is amazing This is amazing. This is amazing. Perfect. So let me just let me just check this. Okay. Just audio will be totally fine. <laughs> cool, cool. I'm so looking forward to this. I am so looking forward to this now. So yeah, let's let's wait a moment and let's Kevin join. Ah, there he is. Okay, this is so cool. Hello. Hello there. Hi. Oh wait, Kev Kevin, how are you doing? Uh, shit, I'm getting you twice. Oh no. Uh, uh, turn off. Turn off the YouTube then. Do you hear me? Check check one two check check one two. Just turn off the the YouTube okay. stream. Yeah, I got you. you. Okay, yeah. perfect. Kevin, yeah, Kevin Hello. Henderson, live here now, the, C, uh, the COO of Pimax. And uh, Kevin, we haven't talked for a long time. <laughs> so That's true. Ama so amazing to hear you again. And uh, yeah, Hopefully I'm welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I never had any grudges against Pimax. It was more like Pimax seems to have some grudges against me. Well. <laughs> so I never, I don't have grudges. So, um, I, gave an, I gave an interview to Upload VR too, so I, I'm a friendly guy. Yeah, great, great, great. Yeah, so, well, I don't have, I didn't have any grudges, so I was really surprised, anyways, that that somehow went, uh, yeah, separate ways. But anyways, I'm super. No, happy I'm happy to, to uh, work with you. I love. I always. We had a blast. We always had a exactly, good time. You know, exactly. I enjoyed so, uh, our so, uh, previous CESs and stuff. Exactly, know, so exactly, exactly. So I have absolutely no grudge whatsoever. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just um, yeah, I'm super happy that you came on now. This this is fantastic. So, is there some questions for me out there in the world? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. First of all, congratulations to the announcement. I was so surprised. I was so <laughs> surprised when when I saw this announcement. So well done. I love yep. the style. Everything like super um, polished. Um, obviously, yeah. it reminded me of like uh, Apple um, <laughs> uh, events. Yeah, obviously, we've come a long way since yeah. those days when you first when you first started with Pimax. And it only yeah, had right. like twenty or thirty people or whatever it was, and exactly, and, uh, exactly. You know, now we're a, a a much more elaborate thing, you know. Yeah, I know, I know. So I was really, really unbelievably surprised. Like probably most of the people that are watching this right now. Sure. So yeah, congratulations to this announcement. And uh, yeah, tell me how long have have you been working on this? How long how long has has I guess Pimax I have a few things just kind of perusing what you guys have been saying. I, I yeah, right. I just I just thought I'd throw some stuff into the mix as far Perfect. For just, yeah, of, co of course. To think to ch just to provoke some thought, I guess. Yeah. But um, one of them is is that a lot of these features that are 
that are in the reality. And remember, this is a reality platform. So right. we're talking about okay. the platform, not just a single headset. So it's a platform. Okay. Um, right. So in the reality platform, there was a whole bunch of stuff that was intended to go into previous headsets that weren't ready. And, okay. and, and to, that didn't get ready in time that we tried to implement for other things. And, uh, you know, and a lot of times it ended up where you needed to build the, the supports for it into the main electronics and you couldn't just make a module. You can't make everything into a module that just right. kind of that kind of hangs off a USB port. Uh, exactly, you, know, yeah. you, end, you end up with all <laughs> kinds of we learned the hard way with okay. the eye tracking that that if you put too much if you put too much power constraints on the USB, you, you can you can cause bottom outs and and things. So. It needed to be uh, to take a lot of these things we were working on. It, you know, it was just going to have to be inside its own platform. You know, and so we'd been working on the P3. So they started so long time ago, almost three years okay. ago. They started building these things into the in some of the things into the P3, which is the reality series. Okay, wow. The all of the previous headsets, meaning the 5K Plus through the AKX or or P2, the one that you tested way back in the day, was a P2. And uh, this is a different platform, so. Okay, yeah, that, that makes so much sense that that you that you start a completely new platform instead of throwing yet another <laughs> um, display into that old old platform. That makes so much sense. So right, tell we us could about, have done that. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm glad that you didn't do it. I'm really glad about it. So tell us a bit more about the new lenses. So in that announcement, it seemed like it's it's a mix of Fresnel lens and a spheric lens. Um, tell us about it. Like, um, w what kind of specifics does it have? Like, do you not have God rays anymore? Um, right. Uh, how, how did you? How did um, you said there's no distortion? Is it because right. of the new lenses, or is it because of better distortion profiles? Tell us about this part. Uh, yeah. So there's two parts to that. You know, there was we we tried to do an aspheric lens that was just an aspheric lens and all the way across, and and uh, it just it just isn't possible really because of the thickness and the weight and you end up so you got it we tried to experiment with materials to try to get a lightweight a spheric lens and ended up where the way only way to do it was to combine a fresnel lens and a spheric lens together mm -hmm. and uh so the optical engineers is exactly what they did it's a two element lens it's got a top element and a bottom element that are that are fused together And uh, and then the uh, the other aspect of it is is the new distortion profile. And it, what happens is is that it, this now happens inside the headset. And uh, so it's the those profiles are all completely baked in the in the headset. So cool. um, yeah, and they so I actually got to try it. So I mean, and uh, I got to see you know a kind of a uh, an early preview of it a couple months ago. And uh, the big thing is, I was actually supposed to give this presentation today, but uh, none of us, Mar Martin, couldn't go either. We couldn't get our visas. They won't approve anything right now, so no, because of COVID. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so they asked me to stick around and answer questions, and I, you know, I've been involved in this Perfect. project since the first day, and it's hard to keep quiet about. It. It's you know, when you know uh <laughs> what, what's in the works it's, you just want to talk yeah, about course. it right and, and, and i've now been you can. dying <laughs> now you can i've been Ooh. dying to 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 uh to talk about some of these things i've that i've been able to test and try and see evolve over time so so what was your feeling hey, when, look when who's you, here, what, what, <laughs> what was your feeling when you um when you first put this on is it like my, is it like mind blowing or what is gotta, it like You gotta understand it. To, it I have to admit, you know, it wasn't for me because the first time I tried these, you know, you, you know, as you know, it's not perfect. You know, when you get a new prototype of something, there's always yeah, something wrong. Prototypes I, are always, yeah. <laughs> like when you tried the <laughs> maybe the M the M1 version of the, you know, of the Pi, you're like, oh, you probably like this will never work, <laughs> you know. And yeah, then know, they sent you a remember. new one, and then you, know, you get know. to try another one. It's a little yeah. bit better. Maybe it's got a different different yeah. problem. And it was the makes, same thing for me. Okay, cool. I know. It was I know the same you, thing for me. Has come a long way. Yeah, these things are the same thing for me. So when you when we when we get to try these things, it it, it doesn't. It's not. 
like you would if I sent you, you know, if you get a prototype that's like the 20th one in the line, you're like, holy crap, this thing is <laughs> this thing really is mind blowing. Yeah. But when you see one through 19, it doesn't seem that way every day, you know. So for me uh, right now, but if I was to just take the thing off and try a, a different headset, which I have a whole collection of them, you know, and that, then then it's impressive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. then then I'm like, then it is a holy crap kind of thing. Okay. You know. Okay. Cool. But so, it, um, just using it every day and seeing it evolve, it's not. You know. Yeah, of course, I understand. Especially yeah, when you you're working so close with early prototypes, the yeah the way towards the final thing that is uh, the magic part. Sure. Um, yeah, so um, uh, how about the the displays then? So it yep. is like mini LED, which means like you can have back, yeah right mini LED backlight, which it's means a 5, like you, element dimmable backlight. dimmable zones, just like the MacBook it's Pro dimmable display. pixels, dimmable pixels even wow each okay. pixel is dimmable. So it has a uh, they've worked a long time on that. That was the first piece we had. We actually had an 8KX that had it for a bit. And that was how I first saw it, but it, but uh, but the um, but then uh, you know it's it's going to be fundamental to this new headset. It's it adds massively with a capital M to the quality that you get, because what it does is it yeah. drops out those blacks, and uh, so, and you don't see any of the edges oh, that you see. You know you know a lot of times even on a TV that that has the dimmable zones, you can see the edges where the zones are, and uh, the zones are so small with the five thousand. Uh, elements that you can't see the edges in it. You, okay. On, no on, uh, yeah, and like on a on a headset like this, you're you're so close to the screen that you would re really be able to easily see the edges, and you can't. So, um, okay. they're they're just microscopic. You, if you like uh, uh, pixel peeper photos, you can see it if you zoom way up to look at every no. pixel. But. Uh, but yeah, I, it's excellent. It's it is cool. definitely an innovation, and the panel with the QLED is big. Yeah. And uh, we have a relationship with the panel. You know, as you know, all, most of our engineers come from that field, including right. Robin. And so, so they have all the contacts over there, and that's how they. Okay. Got the panel. So, yeah. So, um, is it like true OLED blacks? But the colors are yeah. even better than OLED. That's what I got from the announcement. So yeah, better than no, OLED the, colors. The BT, the BT 2020 is yeah, right, 90 percent. Right, right. Yeah, okay, and yeah. OLED is only seventy. The the, the BT yeah. 2020 is a really hard standard to to have full coverage on. You know. Okay. And uh, you can right. look it up, but you know this is a really impressive uh, panel and backlight combination. And of course, it's higher resolution. Of course, it has to be higher resolution because the headset's wider field of view. Okay. Yeah, right. It's even higher FOV than the current ones, right? Yeah, it's about my te in our own experience, it's about thirty degrees wider H, a horizontal, okay. and about thirty degrees taller. Wow, but is it truly like you wouldn't have any kind of distortions? <laughs> I, I just can't believe at to first have really or now, like no distortions. <laughs> like what? in the early days or now, that's the thing. You know, it's yeah. When I first saw it, I didn't think it would ever work. Okay. And then, uh, but then, you know, they, that's what they do. They keep pounding away at it over time, and you finally you get it there. And then today, it looks good. So, okay. Cool. Wow, uh, it still has, you know, we're, <laughs> you know, this things that you know some time away from today. So, you know, it doesn't work perfect. Okay. Yeah. But sure. uh, but for for something that's that far away, mm -hmm. you know, we could release a headset like just like it is right now. You know. But mm -hmm. if you if we just did the panels and we just did the backlight, right? But right. and the lens. Okay. Hard so, part is the wireless. You know, connecting this thing to wireless. You know, we had to, that took a lot. The wireless yeah. module was intended for the other series too. It was supposed to be a module, but it turned out that to get the right to get the bandwidth right, we had to put in a number of technologies onto the main electronics, and so to get so the that, bandwidth. So that so that Y gig um, model it will be directly uh, in Q4 and Q4 2022. Like this yeah. will be okay. It's all it's all going to be released as one piece. It's not going to okay. be okay. Okay, that's better. That's better. So it's not in modules that something will come later. Everything in one thing, and they will just get it in uh, 2022 and Q4. I'm mean, right, and then if the everything sleeve. goes according to plan. <laughs> We already have the little sleeve that snaps on there. Okay. Wow. So. 
you use the YGIG technology in order to right. like push those pixels, and it's it's like crazy amount of pixels. So um, sure. you must be using some kind of upscaling, right? That makes sense. There's no upscale. It? it has an upscale mode, uh, but for the for this, it it doesn't use upscaling, but it does use uh, clipping where it clips the where it clips pixels that aren't used. It does a lot of tech. It uses a lot of techniques to. Okay. And it use it in the uh, the Toby eye tracker. Actually, is designed to reduce the bandwidth coming across. So, um, so the the eye tracker reduces the bandwidth coming across with with the foveated rendering. And uh, there's a lot of techniques involved to try to get that where you still okay the highest frame rate and FOV. Is this also using split rendering technique where some part is being rendered like on the device? No. Uh, oh, okay. I, I t it it actually uses um, a hybrid rendering technology when you have it in standalone mode. Okay, right. But, but for uh, PC VR streaming, no, it's not like what the thing that um, the Valve Deckard probably also can do. I right, no, I don't. No, okay. I, I mean, I don't okay. think it. It is not the same. Okay, it's not split rendering. Okay, good. Yeah, right. good that we can um, like uh, um, answer these kind of questions right now. Sure. Um, yeah, you asked so, about the Pimax store. Is there going to be one? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Tell us about <laughs> exactly like um like what kind of content will people be able to play? Obviously, Steam VR sure. um, wirelessly directly, right? But um, yeah, about the well, a lot there. of those. So what you were a lot we didn't really mention this. I guess maybe we should have. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but you can we only had an hour to, sque to squeeze <laughs> everything in there, and do, yeah, I can say it real quick. A <laughs> lot of those, we showed a, we showed like ten different. Uh, uh, people, developers that had things. Those are all developers we've been working with uh, for for things that are for uh, for the store. So uh, that are for the standalone store and for the regular Pimax store for PC VR things. So we have a lot of them that we couldn't show too that you know that that weren't far enough long to make an announcement or or talk about it. Yeah. So, but yeah, our hope is to have quite a few uh, titles at launch for the store. Okay, you mean for the standalone store, right? Right. Okay. And, well, and and the regular Pimax store. We're, the Pimax store will actually have regular PC VR titles too. All right. But okay. the, the difference is okay. they'll be optimized for Pimax. It'll be the same, like it'll be the same uh, game or application mm. that you're used to, but it'll just be one that's that has some Pimax optimizations in it. Right. So, um, are you have you already reached out to those developers of those quest games um, to to port over to to your store? And how yep. how hard how hard is it going to be to port like quest um, games to the Pimax? Yeah, I mean, it, it, that was a thing. You know, at, at first, it, that's a, that is a hard thing to do because it's a because the panels are so high, the resolution and FOV yeah, right. of the panels and 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 all of that, but. Um, but one thing about it is is that the um, the the refresh rate, FOV, and resolution are all variable, and the maximum resolution that is possible on the standalone mode is 4K per eye. Okay. And so you can't yeah. go to 6K per eye. And in fact, and then they has a it has a scaled mode and it has a 5K mode. So you can go. So there's four modes that it can operate in. It can operate 8K or 5K or 8K scaled or 5K scaled. Mm -hmm. And the and the FOV is only 150. Okay. Got it. So the FOV yep. is 150. Still, still good default. enough. <laughs> so essentially you can get you can get 4K per I at 150. Okay. Um and in in for a lot of games. And uh not all, but it it depends on the application. If it's got a lot of okay. it's got a lot of stuff then it has to be rolled down and, and the refresh rate has to be lower and uh, you have to and some of them you have to go into the scaled mode you know okay um, but, how, uh, how, yeah how it's going to take time to okay. get it right sure um, that's the how, hardest thing uh, i think okay so how about the the battery is uh, it, it it looks very cool that you can just put it in is it like um hot everybody swap loves those everybody love the counterweight <laughs> is it hot swappable or people is always it... talk about how much they love the counterweights on pimax and how great it yeah. is and all that we thought yeah. hey man let's put the battery yeah. right where the counterweight goes that, that makes sense that makes sense so is it is it hot swappable on and how it long is. is it going to oh cool and how long how long can you play on one but if it's hot swappable then it's not so important but um, on one battery, um, um, how long can you play wirelessly? About three hours. Okay, yeah, that's 
That's good. And then you can simply swap the battery. Uh, the other, the other, yeah, it takes two seconds. It's got two little notches. Okay. You, just, you just pop it in and out. The thing about it is, though, is that it's uh, like a uh, on the length of time that you can play, you can control that to some degree by changing the resolution and the okay. uh, yeah, sure. and the and the default frame rate and other things. So if you if you knock some of that stuff down, you can get more time. Right. And if you go if you go absolute maximum, you only get like two hours. Okay. Yeah. Well, two hours is still a good time. Um, is there any chance that you can then power it with like a power bank? Like what you can do with the Quest? Like just simply add like with a USB C some power there? I don't know. Okay. I don't think so. But okay. I, Robin will probably tell me that I'm wrong on that. But <laughs> but yeah. uh, it doesn't seem like it. Okay. <laughs> but okay. It, But, it's but just a, a regular battery that you snap in. Okay, but it, well, if it's hot swappable, then it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. And tell us, tell us a bit more about your controllers and the tracking. So when I watched your the announcement, yeah. when I, I thought like, okay, these controllers, they do look like the Quest controllers, the Quest right. One controllers. Right. Are they very similar? And tell us yeah. about your um, <laughs> yes. Tell us, are they from the same um, factory? Has to be. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, it's not. But it's it has not. to be. Okay. It's a standalone mode kind of dictates it because yeah, if we course. port if we port yeah. a lot of um if you know like with side quests if you port if you get a bunch of stuff running they're they have the same they need to be have the same layout and uh that works so yeah, uh, yeah i like that's... it well i like i think we all like the oculus touch controllers we all like that uh, button layout it's like the yeah. standard now so it makes sense yeah our team was really uh set back by that because the uh The, uh, the those slam controllers are a hell of a lot easier to design than the than the Steam VR tracking controllers are. Okay. So did, we had a hell you... of a time doing the swords with the joystick and the yeah I can remember cap, cap sense and everything. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It didn't really yeah. um, work out in the end, right? But um, how about how about these controllers? Did you um, did you make them by yourself, or are you working together with somebody who simply um, supplies you the solution? No, they're uh, they're they're homegrown. All, but again, okay. they you get the the, um, the 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 thing is though that when you work with Qualcomm uh, and and their uh, group, uh, these solutions are really uh, what can I say? They're veteran. They're kind of well tested and 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 really far along compared to other things where you have to just okay. invent everything. Yeah, right, exactly. In this yeah. in this case right. when we got when we did the uh, the HDK together with them, we had to push the envelope on certain things to get the higher refresh rates. Okay. But but they were willing to do that because they thought VR headsets are going to go there someday, so they they were willing to make that investment. Mm -hmm. So um so the, these are this is an advanced slam with a very high refresh. And uh, and the uh, and the controllers were you know were the, the HDK they you know they're part of uh, initially right. were part of that okay, so we perfect. didn't have to invent reinvent okay, the it. wheel yeah right and, right. and, and the same thing with thanks the Toby Qualcomm, says Gigodon <laughs> cool yeah, yeah thanks, and Qualcomm. the and the same thing with Toby I mean we didn't have to reinvent the wheel on that either they've this is their fourth version of that exactly, and so yeah. that makes sense so you know we don't we're not inventing a fair amount of these things you know so right so. Yeah, that makes sense. Also, uh, then how about the the Steam the Steam VR streaming? Now that we have Gigodin, the maker of um, virtual desktop here in the house as well, um, sure. Did you um, are you using CloudXR or did you make your own um, Steam streaming? Or you're using the Qualcomm solution that they also give, right? Yeah, That's you'll notice that we do in the in the thanks section or in the when we thank Nvidia, we do. We do think CloudXR. Right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it makes sense. As, yeah, that makes sense. Part, yeah. part of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, but no, our plan is to is to have support. You know, is to have a kind of a wide body support. But we're we're going with the things that work right away. <laughs> you yeah, know, that, that we makes can, so much sense. Yeah. Our our goal is to deploy uh, solid things that work. We don't want to get into this uh, situation where you can constantly have to revise something and make little tweaks to to okay. fix glitches and things like yeah. that. So we're really We're we're really wanting the to have the more solid pieces. So okay, the more Gigodon, solid it is, the more likely it's in there. Right. <laughs> Gigodon is asking, do you plan to support OpenXR for standalone mode? Uh, yeah, Robin is uh, is wanting to support that, and he actually told me that uh, that's something that we that we want to do. 
But uh, whether or not that is something that we launch with, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But uh, but you know, if we if uh, if we had some people out there that support it and would be willing to test our implementation of it, it might make it an, an easier task. You know, so okay. I'd reach out. I'd ask people to read like a, like a, like a virtual desktop a guy go down to uh, reach out to us and maybe you know we could get him a sample of the headset and he could. Uh, sure. Give, give our little test versions a try. <laughs> See if yeah. it's something, something I'm sure that, that works he, for him. I'm sure it's going to work for him, and I'm sure he would love to. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm going to um, send both of you an email. I'm just going to connect you to so that sure. you, you can talk about it. Yeah. Um, yeah I love cool. that. Yeah, I I'm love virtual desktop. By the way, I'm a big fan. Me too. Me too. He knows. And yeah, I'm going to send you an email after this show. So. Sure. Um, how about um, cooling? Um, so in, in the announcement, it says like passive and active cooling both yeah, together. Yeah, it's got these two little bitty fans that run right. that have a slot that runs through it, and it's got this little channel okay. that where the air circulates through some of the hotter uh, parts. So, it's got, we we did that actually. You may not know this, but or pro- you probably do. But yeah. uh, the AKX has a heat sink. Has some pretty good size. It's got some metal heat sinks in it, mm-hmm. and uh, because it was generating a lot more heat than uh, the previous headsets because it had a lot, you know, it was a lot tougher, and in, in a fair amount of ways. So, uh, we wanted to get away from that for, because of the weight. So we used these fans, these these really high reliability, real thin fans, and uh, and it uh, it's got a block in it so it doesn't pull in a lot of dust and things like that, and uh, it it just circulates the air through it and it keeps it cool and okay. uh, of real course. simple. We hope that it's not going to be loud, right? I had some other headsets here standalone, and they were kind of loud. <laughs> HTC. Sure. <laughs> so tell uh, us. So how how what about the, the the noise that these fans will make? You don't know what the end noise is going to be, though, because you don't know when you get the final electro get even close to final electronics, the the temperature is going to be lower, but it, it's more distributed. But that set because when these things are going all the way, I mean, if you just have them running at the maximum uh, dispersion, then you can hear it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And uh, but when they're like seventy percent, you can't. Okay. So, yeah, right. Then you'll whether or not run them at 70%. we can. <laughs> well, whether hopefully that's what it ends up being. You know. Yeah. Okay. Great. Hopefully, it's not having to be a hundred all the time. You know. I, but right. it, already, it's not. The, what I have, what I've seen, is not so. Okay, cool. Yeah. Who knows? O- okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Then automatic IPD adjustment, eye tracking, yep. um, face tracking, lip tracking, everything. Yeah, the IPD is- adjustment yep. is Toby. So they have uh, an assembly that uh, that does that, and we just had to adapt it to our mecha- one of our mechanisms. And we actually had an improved mechanism for a future headset that we did. And, uh, and so it's a combination of the Toby, which does all the measurements and everything, and that. Okay, good. And um, one important Very simple, question. Really. One important yeah. question: um, Do you move only the lenses, like with the old Pimax headsets, or do you also move the whole move? thing? Oh, good. Yeah. That's good. That's good because yeah, there was like one part of the original, right, that uh, was not so yep. perfect. But that is good that you move the displays as well. And it goes all the way down to fifty-seven now, you know, so it works right. with a lot more people. Okay, cool. So. Lots of questions answered, but there's more questions sure. because, sure. well, um, how about the the Pimax station? So yeah. it seems to be like a mini PC that is perfectly configured <laughs> to run I it don't wirelessly. Know. I have to be honest yeah. with you about that. Yeah, I, good. Okay. I, I don't know honesty, much. As you know. I, I, that's not a, me saying I'm not being about anything else. It's just... <laughs> I guess they wouldn't really be, be absolutely thrilled with me to say that I don't know a whole hell of a lot about it, but, okay. but, uh, I have never, Seen I don't it. know any, I, I know, I, I can tell you what I know about it. How about that? Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, I know that it's a third part, that it's a company that produces this and it's something that exists essentially. And, okay. uh, it's a modified version of an existing thing. That's, that's all I know about it. So, so it's not. It's not something we have to invent. It's okay. A, so it's a it's a PC. It's a PC with a yeah. with a standard graphics card, like a, I, think so. I don't know, thirty seventy or thirty eighty or whatever. Nah, I think it's. I don't have to. I'm not. I would hate to say, but I, yeah. I think. I think it's a new integrated solution of some sort. Okay, but it can run the Pi, the Pimax twelve K QLED at its full resolution at, its, at the maximum resolution or. 
Yeah, it can. Um, it can. It's a. It's roughly what the one that I that I saw the specs for that we were talking about. Now they may have a better one than that, and I don't know, mm-hmm. but it had roughly a twenty eighty okay. uh, le- level of capability. Okay, and and that can run this beast, <laughs> the, the beast it, headset. It it can. <laughs> Okay. It can, but it it has to run it in a in a particular in some Mode. particular modes, and yeah, right, it can run right. the and then you can load the standalone stuff onto it. Okay, okay, but but, but why would you want to load the standalone stuff? Because on then it? you can crank the FOV up all the way. You ah, on the standalone okay. stuff, okay. you can go crazy. <laughs> you right, know, right? Got it. That makes sense. It lets you do the standalone stuff really nice. You know, but. Uh, but yeah. if you do, if you use it to, for PC VR things, where you where you transport them over there, uh, how that works, I don't, it's supposed to do that. But I, how that works, I don't know. But I heard that it was about a 2080 for that. Okay, um, can you give us some some price range without giving us the full price? So I, I don't know. know. Okay, I, I don't, don't know. know at all. I okay. would I would be completely wrong. I'm sure. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. So then uh, let's go back to the headset. So um, sure. face tracking, eye tracking, uh, like all kinds of all kinds of trackers supported sure. by this. They 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 are run like locally on the device by the XR2, I suppose, right? Those right. Yeah, right. Um, is there any kind of that's the advantage of it, by the way? Yeah, right. It, right, it, right. A lot of people don't really. Re- a lot of people think having something like that is just for standalone gaming. It's not. Uh, it has all sorts of capabilities and functions that you can get that were, I mean, things like configuration, you know, things like having, uh, do, doing uh, on headset, um, uh, per, uh, oh, what's it, what's it called? The, uh, Ocu- the little force field that Oculus and HTC throw up when you get close to the wall. Uh, it can, it can do that yeah. internally. Um, it can do a lot of things um, on its own without the PC. And uh, it can right. do things like detect the person that it is, okay, and uh, and a lot of things like that. So it's got a lot of neat functionality that right that you can get that'll evolve over time. So the kinds of improvements okay. that we can make are much better than okay. what we could do with the, you know with the AKX, for example. Right, right. But for for this face tracking and lip tracking for all for all these camera data, developers yeah. can also use it for their games, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So there's an SDK for that already, and they can. Indeed. Just... Okay. Yes. Cool. Wow. That's 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 pretty exciting yeah. then. Yeah, we started sending those SDKs out uh, late last month and early this month uh, with the mm-hmm. development hardware and things for people to start writing. Okay. Cool. Um, so, how many um, gigabyte of storage does the device have in full in full um, standalone mode? The one I saw, it just had a car. It had a card. Card reader. It, okay. it had a. It had a one of the. It had a little mini, but uh, I imagine that the final version will have a fixed amount. Okay, but card reader also now um, confirmed <laughs> in this moment. Uh, only in the only in the samples. <laughs> in the version that you have. Okay. Yeah. Right. Who know, I imagine they'll to save money that you that little connector is uh, that kind of thing is expensive and it's hard to mount with the SMT. Uh-huh. So. You're going to waste five bucks right there, you know. So right, right. Okay, got it. Every um, dollar counts. Yeah, of course, especially for something like this. Of course. Yeah. So um, the device yeah, seems just too good to be true. <laughs> if you, I, you if, know, if you look at it, right? It may, sound that, like, it may it, sound that way, but these are all sounds, existing. Uh, these aren't none of this stuff was really that. You know, if someone just said, "Hey, Pimax is going to yeah. is going to do a 12K," you would have not thought of, you wouldn't have even questioned that. Yeah, of if course. Someone, if we just said, "Oh, okay, <laughs> it'll, yeah, it'll yeah. be released tomorrow, probably." You, oh, okay, yeah, right. there we go. I would have then thought about say, 16K okay, though, not 12. Sure. <laughs> then you say, "Okay, well, we're going to do a new housing." Yeah, you probably that would have been okay. You probably say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah they okay. can do, yeah, they right. can do that." Yeah. You know, it's I guess it's the combination of things, but really none of this. Stuff. Toby makes the eye tracking. It's right, quite. Right. It's been around a long time. They're good at it. Um, you know, uh, Qualcomm on the you know on, yeah, on the, the internal yeah, subsystem. It it's not like sense. we had to go out and. It's not a witch cross. Yeah, right. uh, the the wireless assembly. You know, all of the things are things that we already had stacks for 
with the we had to have solved many of these mysteries long time ago to get the 8kx working and even the 5k plus working right, so right so you, so you, you know, did learn thing, a lot in your think time. about what we had to do to get 90 hertz working on the 8kx you know <laughs> there's a lot that had to happen with nvidia for that and a lot of that knowledge came in handy with the wireless you know so you, a, lo a lot of these things have a lot that had to happen over the years to to be able to have them. So yeah, right. uh, yeah. our, our IPD adjustment mechanism, I mean, we already had one, of course, but you know, as you might imagine, we're working on we were have been for a long time working on a better one. Yeah, that, right. that would make perfect sense to you too, probably. But, no, you're right. You're right, and uh, it does make perfect sense. And I'm I'm telling you, I'm I'm I totally understand that you you went a long way from the very beginnings with the sure. very first headsets, right? When uh, so the truth and is, Viva and me were trying them until it's now. It's the combination of things that are way. exotic, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, having a new panel is that really that exotic? No, you know, is having yeah, that, some that cool is not exotic. At all. That exotic. Uh, <laughs> new, none of it panels. really is, but it's. But, but the truth is, is that th th it's a combination of things. You're like, holy crap, all this yeah, stuff right. in one thing. The announcement you know, just was like, what? <laughs> yeah, What's it makes on? it a little bit more difficult. But the truth is, it's not really, none of it is just, is crazy stuff. There's wireless headsets on the market today. There's, you know, the Vive has it, Oculus has it. It's, it's not a new invention. So mm -hmm. it's just getting, it's, it's, it's just cutting down the, the data flow so that you can drive it with the best wireless okay. uh thing you have and that's the only magic i guess that okay. you don't see in anything else there's that's the only <clears throat> hurdle piece that were invention process had to really okay. go crazy so the lenses how, is another one I the, mean, the they, lenses that was kind look of very interesting thing. as well yeah. so, so how about the lenses is there is there no god race like with the, the spheric lenses there's there well the god the thing is the god rays are all, typically appear in in within your near vision so when you're looking through the directly through a lens you're you're getting reflections mm -hmm. off the lens and so you what you have to think about is wh where are those coming from right the the wider the angle away from your eye the less likely that's a source of god rays because the angle the light would have to travel becomes very very a very very high angle that means that all that stuff's coming from the center. So, so that is where some, we but only in the so, very peripheral um, area. So the, so, so the god, so the the pieces that prevent that are all in the aspheric piece, which is very large. Mm -hmm. So, so when you get way out into the corners, it's it's less okay. and less likely that god rays will reach your eye. Okay. So, if I were to say what percentage of them, what in just in my opinion, is it yes. is it absolutely zero? I'd say it's like ninety eight percent reduced. Okay. Okay. Well, that sounds like a really can good, I good cause it reduction. to happen? You know, if I'm just sitting there moving it around and try and trying yeah. to do it, yeah, I can get a little bit, but not it's so sure. small. Okay. So, it, so it's better less than, than the it, current Let's ones. put it this way: if you think it's solved in the AKX, it, this is less than that. Okay. Okay, that sounds really great. Yeah. So well then. Um, let me also talk about what I just said. Like, sure. like I, I root for you, and I hope that you can make it happen. Like everyone who's watching this live stream wants to have something like this in sure. a year, right? But unfortunately, um, if we look at at the past, at Pimax past, you did promise a lot, and you it came out the stuff, but it came like so so much later, and. Sure. Um, and do but I would say that all of those things flow into these things. You know, there there was. There really, on some of that stuff, there really was an invention process, and it's, it's more than just that. You, it's your production process. So you got to invent it, yeah. you got to refine it, and then you got to get it to a factory and build thousands of them. I know. That, there's so, a so Elon Musk you... once said that that's the hard that manufacturing process is harder than the design and prototyping, and it's true. Okay. So so tell us, do you do you believe that in Q4 2022 we will get that device? Here's what I'll say about that. Here's my suggestion. My suggestion yes. is this: No one's going to believe. I, I could say it'll be here tomorrow, and it's all the same. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. But but here's know. the thing. But I, I think a better there's a better way to determine that, a, a more useful way, and that is CES is just right around the corner. Okay, we're talking about not long. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a couple just, of months. I'll be yeah, there. Of course. Nobody <laughs> thinks it's a long time now. It's just it's it's early January. This is November almost, right? Yeah, exactly. So here here we are. We're almost there. Uh, my my suggestion is is see is to is to come 
and, and see, we're going to be showing the platform, uh, it, the platform itself um, at the show, which will have all of the, you know, all of this stuff we're talking about. Um, there, there will be a couple things that we, that are, that are, may or may not get shown that are part of that. Uh, it depends on how, uh, you know, we, you don't want to have a, an Apple moment where the famous uh, calculator to stop, didn't work all the whole time while we were there or anything. But, um, but generally speaking, uh, I think that we will have the platform operational and in a production state that's sufficient to be, make people have a nice feeling about where it's at. And that's in January, and we're talking about Q4. So if, if we have it in a nice production level state that you can see and test and try in January, early January, and there's still all this time, uh, it's not crazy to think that they really will ship then. Yeah. Well, so we also my, saw nice prototypes of the Pimax headsets before, and then sure. it still took so long, right? Yeah, but so, we, we so can't, when you we, say now the whole, Q4 2022, now we, we you obviously know we don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> for one year, the whole country of China was shut down during that time as well. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not really an even money comparison when you know, when not only was China shut down, the whole, even when it came back open again, other countries became shut. Japan, then you had Japan and Taiwan and other yes. supply, fundamental yes, we understand, suppliers. we understand, we understand. Everything from lenses to yeah. chips to, I know, it but wasn't this is so now, easy. I, I know, I know, I know, but this is now over. So, th so this means Indeed. like you're, you're more confident now. That, we managed that, to that, deliver that, those things anyway. And I know. No, and, and by the way, did you see anyone delivering headsets? HTC had none. You know, nobody was delivering headsets during that time. Even Oculus skipped a year. So, yeah. no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying like you like kept your promises, right? I also got the backup box, and I think it's good that you send out the stuff that you say you will send out, right? It's just about. I lobby for you. Believe me when I tell you, my, a lot of my. A lot of my history has been spent lobbying for these things, you know, and I, I, know. I really feel strongly that these things needed to be in people's hands and yeah. one and way or I, another. And it's not so easy. It did, it did happen. <laughs> so that's, yeah. what I, that's what I always say. It did happen. So I got everything that I, that I, and, uh, that I and I'll, at any time. I'll so add another thing to this mix just for something to throw around in the in the idea mix, and that is you'll notice that we're not we're not we didn't pop up with a website today asking for money either. Right. If you'll notice, we're not asking for orders. We're not asking for deposits. We're not asking for pre-orders. Nothing. Yeah, that's a not a point, penny. Yeah. Not one penny. Okay. Yeah. Verajao is asking for cash. They want all the money up front right now. We're yeah. not asking for one penny. So. But Vajra, All I'm saying, I also really think they are going to deliver in December I do. 2021. <laughs> no, I <laughs> they do because they already they have will. a headset that's very similar. It's a, right. It'd be like us delivering an 8KX that has a new panel or something. It's you know, and yes, and yes. missing uh, the audio solution or something. It would. Be, it's not that the leap <laughs> between an 8KX and the and the 12K is pretty good leap. Okay. Yeah. Right. Admittedly, so uh, you know, I would say this: since the fact that we're not asking for money, deposits, pre-orders, nothing should kind of tell you what our level of confidence is. Um, you know, if I, we were, if we were going down, a, we're very, we're very confident. We'll have this, the, the time frame that the team put forward was more aggressive than the one we mentioned, okay. <laughs> you know? And uh, so I would say that uh, I think it's a fair, I think it's fair uh, timeline. I do. Okay, so you and think I, it's and possible. I think, and I think the benchmark for my saying that, ask me again when I see you in January, if you, if you come to the booth, I hope you do. Yeah, obviously I will come if, if, uh, if I'm accepted there. No, of course. Uh, no, I, I just I'm hope kidding, we get, I get I'm a kidding. chance. I hope you get a chance to check it out. You get to, you know, come to the show, check it out, and yeah, let me give you the tour of, of, of the I'll features and things. But um, then that can be the benchmark because – then you'll get to see what state it's in at that time. And it's right. our only, and since it's only January, you know, and we got till Q4 according to the time and maybe do better than Q4, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, but we'll see what state it's in. And then you ask me again and uh, just don't forget. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll see, we'll see where it's at then. And then we'll get your opinion on if sure. it's in insuffi insufficient state. And you can tell everybody, of course, 
if it's in sufficient state to to be something okay, that we, sure. we, I will, we that is for sale. I will absolutely try it and tell people. So at what point in time are you going to take pre-orders then if you don't take them now? Is like around Yeah, what um, we're going to do Q is first We've got this trade-in program. If you have an 8KX, you're gonna, we're right. going to credit you all your money, 100% against this. So, so you're going to send the old headset back to Pimax or what? And or? that, you know, that was at first we were talking about doing that, <laughs> and we're still that tossing that around. But the the logistical aspect of it is, uh, you know, it might be difficult. So we're we're kind of debating on how that might work. Maybe well, we have a local area that you ship it to, like a single address and, or something. Yeah. Or maybe we just have a method where you don't have to send it in and we give you a little bit less and we get and it's uh, where you get the option of sending it in or not and you get a little less and keep your headset. Yeah, I, we haven't decided yet, but that you will 100% be able to get your 100% of, of your money that you spent. Not, not the price, but the money that you spent. So in other words... If you were in the Kickstarter and you got an AKX for the shockingly low price of four ninety nine, <laughs> which is which by any measure is a good deal. Yeah, sure. No, also like uh, when I went, I was also a Kickstarter beggar, as you know, right? And yeah, I think I got yeah. a great deal. Like the, all the stuff that I got is is pretty mind blowing. Yeah, it just took a long speaking. time. Yeah, it, yeah. it took it took quite yeah. some years, but the stuff that I got for that money is is like incredible. But you know. Yeah. I hope that we push the VR industry along and we have exciting things that keeps them on their toes and keeps everybody. I think good VR things benefit everyone. And, uh, and so if, if we can kind of, you know, push the envelope of that, get people thinking about what super, extremely high resolution is like and what a lot of these things are like and show it at the shows. Right. Uh, you know, I, I think that maybe, uh, you know, people will take notice. Uh, the other, the other I'm VR sure. companies, uh, maybe HTC in the in the world, will say, "Oh man, you know, th this is time to not have uh, like the the HTC the little glasses that they did the other day with the <laughs> you know the flex, uh, flow. you know the flow. Uh, that, that wasn't very exciting to me. I'm a VR fan myself. I think it's kind of cool. Maybe watch a movie on a plane or something. But yeah, but as far I'll, as just I'll check it the, out. The, yeah, I'll I check it out too. I, I may even buy mind. one. <laughs> I bought and one. I, I may even <laughs> buy money. one. You know." Yeah. But the thing is, you know, I'm always want to see bigger, better, faster things that do that make a more immersive uh, matrix. <laughs> you know, I want to see the matrix of the hol holodeck, and I hadn't yeah. found that yet. <laughs> you know, nothing has that yet. So, uh, I, you know, I think that uh, companies that are try at least trying to do it, and Virgil's included in that, getting it, getting to the next Barrio, level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're great. Yes. Vario is uh, awesome. What they've done. Is a great thing, and and yeah, I think, good. and I'm a and I'm a, and I'm a fan. Looks really and good. And I absolutely. wish them all the power in the world, and I hope to compete with them. Yes. I, uh, really, uh, to the best of our ability, you know, and that's absolutely, absolutely, uh, same thing. I, I have exactly the same thoughts for for you and Vario. I, I I root for both of you. I really hope you super succeed with this. I wish I want you... them to succeed, but I want to compete both. with them too. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, I don't. I don't want to <laughs> succeed in a way where it hurts, where it, where it just hurts another VR company. No, no, exactly. You know, I don't want to go there. But what I do want to do is maybe get everybody thinking, man, what would it be like if you had. You know, two you know, two hundred degrees non distorted view. That's you know, all and, and some of these love. amazing things. Uh, so, how do you? What does it mean to do that? What's that like? And um, right. and so, if if we can show the show that, that's that's a great thing for everybody. And I hope that that others you know go down this path too. I, I'm course. excited to see what Oculus has. Uh, that's going to be cool too, and then you know that's right around. Their announcements are right around the corner. So, yeah, let's let's find out. Yeah, probably who knows? Probably though, <laughs> for the Pimax headsets, you will not uh, need a Facebook account. <laughs> right. <is> <laughs> uh, yeah, I hope that, uh, and you know, that hope to have a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of Quest things uh, on the, you know, to be operable in the standalone mode. Yeah, and uh, get more and more and more of those, and have it where you, you know, we're not going to have everything. Uh, obviously. A uh, game like Beat Saber won't be in standalone mode. Why? Because Oculus owns them. Bought it. You know, right? Uh, exactly. And a lot of and a lot of games they've bought nine nine VR studios in the last year and a half, 
uh, they've taken over a lot of our industry, you know, and it's it a is. little bit, a little bit scary for me. It, it is not only a little bit scary. So I root but, uh, for you. I they root for they try to they try to do it so that so that if we you know they're they're happy for you to have a two thousand dollar headset that plays uh, Beat Saber, right? <laughs> but okay. but they're not. What they don't want is a two hundred dollar headset that plays Beat Saber. Exactly. Yeah. Because that's a that is right in their backyard, that, that is, and they they will entire, stop you. Territory. Exactly. That is absolutely their territory. And, and so I think that's why they're buying these studios. They'll let you go ahead and do the, the expensive stuff, but they don't want you in the in the backyard. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? Exactly. Totally but I do agree. suggest you see, and, and with an open mind, what we have at CES, of course. Well, we're going to have I, some I, cool I, things. Kevin, I don't mean just I'm you, but any, you. anybody yeah, that comes course. to the booth. I know I'm people say, you. hey, you know, they hadn't, you know, Pimax, uh, it took them a while and they, and they had, and, and it, you know, we struggled to get everybody, everything, everywhere. But you know, it was a, it really was a difficult ladder to climb, both invent, ship, manufacture all these things that they promised originally. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, it happened. And, and here, but yet here we are, yeah. and we have yeah, uh, yeah, these things, and we've done a absolutely. decent job. You did, you did deliver on the stuff. And I mean, that, in the end, yeah. And hopefully, that gives people at least some. Uh, you know, thought in the back of their head somewhere, yeah. and the recesses their imagination. That uh, just no confidence on the timeline yet. <laughs> again, uh, like I say, but proofs you, in the uh, yeah, proofs right. in the pudding. Exactly. So I, I really, I really hope that you will surprise us all and uh, laugh in our faces when we. I don't want to do that. We're, 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 no, but you can. You could then when we look shocked at the. I at just want to. Twelve K. I just want to show have a good showing at CES and have yeah. some some nice uh, you know some. Some stuff that people really like, and that is the first uh, awesome milestone. CES are, 2022 are very impressed by. I hope you. I hope we produce something that you're impressed by. Absolutely, uh, we'll to try it out. And uh, I think it. You know, I think you'll get in. We'll give you that chance to really break it down and and to, to just you know do your thing, right? Yeah, so right. that'll Perfect. be good. Wow, that would be absolutely amazing. Kevin, I can only say thank you for coming to the show so spontaneously and answering ah, all the questions. I didn't realize I was going to come on or anything. Just, yeah, me neither. I didn't know. I was just making my normal stream, right? And then I saw yeah. you. Perfect. There was Glad so to spontaneously. Glad to get to talk to you again. That was amazing. Really, really it was, enjoyed it. And nice. Thank you, guys. Here. Everybody that's uh, watching to thank for sticking around and, and listening to the, my, me uh, ramble on. Yeah, 432 people right now. That's amazing. So, yeah, thank you so much. Um, Kevin Henderson, the COO of Pimax, telling Thanks. us thank you. all about the um, Pimax 12K QLED. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much. And see you in um, Las Vegas. All right. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk then or exactly. somewhere leading up to that. Exactly. Yeah. See you then. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wow. <laughs> wow. So that was really, really a spontaneous interview with Kevin Henderson, the COO of Pimax, telling us directly about all the exciting things of, of this um, yeah, announcement of the Pimax 12K QLED. I think he has answered lots of questions and that was absolutely spontaneous. There was not in any way planned like i haven't talked with pimax for like forever <laughs> yeah right so that was like really a surprise for me really happy that this happened so spontaneously and i can just say thumbs up right for i would say pretty amazing reporting on the latest VR news here on MRTV. So if you enjoy what I do, if you love what I do, then absolutely like destroy the like button right now. Destroy it right now. And if you have not yet subscribed to MRTV, then absolutely do so now. And well, please also do let me know in the comments, what do you think about the Pimax 12K QLED? Uh, do you think they will deliver on these crazy promises because the promises are like unbelievable, right? Just like candy store, everything that I want put into this headset. Is Pimax going to deliver on this? Please do let me know your comments down into the comment section of this video. I want you to go crazy. I absolutely want you to go crazy on this one. And without a doubt, 
I am going to fly to Las Vegas for you. I'm going to do live streams from CES 2022. I am going to go to the booth. And of course, I am going to try the Pimax 12K QLED. That's quite a mouthful. And well, now it's 2.26 a.m. And I'm finally going to go home Go to eat something and sleep. What a crazy, crazy day. What a crazy October, right? What a crazy month. So go crazy in the comment section. I will fly to CES for you and I will check out the Pimax 12K QLED. And as you know, I will give you my honest opinion like always. That is everything that I got for this stream. And I'm so looking forward to see you really, really soon. Bye-bye.